So now we're going to take it up a notch uh, with regards to um, evaluating functions. So we have two functions here, f of x is 2x plus 1 and over 3 minus 5x. So f of x is 2x plus 1 over 3 minus 5x. And g of y equals 1 over the square root of y squared plus 1. And we're asked to evaluate both of these functions with respect to these given values. So, you know, I wanted to choose some uh, tricky problems because these are ones that you're going to be seeing on your assignments. So let's do the first one. Let's do f of x equals 2x plus 1 over 3 minus 5x, and we're asked to evaluate it at 1 half. So basically, everywhere you see an x in your f function, you're going to throw in a 1 half in place of it. All right, so we got f of 1 half equals 2 times 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 minus 5 times 1 half. Okay? So, 2 times 1 half, well, 2 times 1 half, that should just give you 1. And then you have plus 1 left over. Okay? So, 2 times 1 half, that's where this first 1 came from. Okay, and then you have that plus one. And we just brought brought that on down for the ride. Okay, and that's over three minus five times one half. Well, you could say five and a half. Okay, you could say um, you know five point five, anything like that. But with fractions in college algebra, we always want to deal with improper fractions because they tend to be much easier to deal with than decimal numbers and mixed fractions. So when you have 5 times 1 half, that's technically 5 over 1 times 1 over 2. And if you remember how to multiply fractions, you multiply straight across. So that would be 5 over 2 when you multiply 5 times 1 half. So 5 over 2. Okay. Now, if you look at that bottom here, we've got an addition and subtraction of fractions. So we're going to come on over to the to the side over here, and we're going to add, subtract the fractions because, you know, you got whole numbers and fractions, meaning you got to find that least common denominator. So that means 3 minus 5 over 2. That means that would be 3 over 1 minus 5 over 2. So you got to get that least common denominator, which in this case would be 2. Okay, so what times 1 will get you 2? Two? 2, and then 2 times 3, that's where that would 6 would come from. And since this is already something over 2, we just leave that alone. So now we've got 6 over 2 minus 5 over 2. So since they're the same denominator, okay, that is, should be 2, not a 5. same denominator, you just subtract the top guys. So 6 minus 5, that would just be a 1. Okay? So 3 minus 5 over 2 would now just be 1 half. So to simplify our fraction, we have 1 plus 1 on the top, which would be 2. On the bottom would be 1 half. Now, if you remember how to divide fractions, Okay. Remember the old saying, keep change flip. So we keep the top number the same. Okay, so that would be 2. We change our division sign, our fraction bar, and multiplication. And then we flip the bottom fraction. So 2 over 1. Keep, change, flip. So that means 2 times 2 over 1 would just be 4 over 1, which would just be Four. Okay. So when we evaluate our function, or we we'll evaluate our f function at one half, the final answer would be four. Okay. A lot of fractions going on on this one. 
Now, if we look at our g function, g function, our g of y, is 1 over the square root of y squared plus 1. And everywhere we see a y in our g function, we're going to throw in a square root of 8. All right, so that would be g of the square root of 8 equals 1 over the square root, parentheses, square root of 8 squared plus 1. All right. Now, a lot of simplifying that's going to happen. So 1 on the top, that's still going to be 1, so we don't do anything with it. On the bottom, we still have the square root, but the square root of 8 squared. If you remember anything about square roots and exponents, a square and a square root literally undo each other. They are inverses of one another. So therefore, the two, the exponent of 2 and the square root literally go away. So all you have left with is 8 and then plus 1 inside the square root. So now we could simplify our fraction even further. So we're going to have still 1 on the top and then the square root was 8 plus 1. Well, 8 plus 1 should be 9. Since we're assuming only positive roots, the square root of 9 would be 3. Therefore, g of the square root of 8 would be 1 third. And that would be your final answer. Okay. So you just have to be careful on how you plug in these the function values into your function. And don't forget to plug it into the correct function. I've seen some students um, accidentally plug in the g of the g value into the f value. So you got to make sure you plug it into the right one. As always, let me know if you have any questions. Happy to help.